Hi everyone, uh, welcome to another video. Uh, today it will be a bit different than, than uh, other videos before, so this is not meant to be uh, a guide on actions or, or anything like that. It is more to be a guide on the different realms that are featured in the game and that uh, gives you a bit of an idea about what this realm is all about, what is it that they are going to be doing at the beginning of the game, their first missions, their first events, uh, and to try to help someone that perhaps is new to the game to, to understand what is it that they should expect from, from their realm or, or one of the realms that are also in play with the scenario. Uh, it's possible that depending on the particular scenario something could be a bit different uh, but I think it would give a, a bit of a basic understanding on, on the realms that you're going to be playing as uh, to be able to, as I said, uh, react to the board, be able to, to know what to expect and so on. Uh, the, the first of all, bef before going into that, just letting you know this is not a, a guide or an optimal move uh, recommendation or anything like this. This is just a bit of a brief explanation with, from my point of view, uh, for you to understand that and if you want you can follow them um, I'm sure that you will come up with with uh, some alternative strategies as well but that that's the whole purpose of the video not not to teach you how to play or what's the most optimal way of playing but just to make you aware of certain things that can be of help for you and perhaps some of your friends that will be new to the game will enjoy the game a bit more if they are aware of this beforehand uh, so I will be going through the different realms in order uh, according to the number of ID that they have. So we will start first with Austria. Uh, Austria is the Holy Roman Emperor, uh, meaning that they have a duty to defend all of the different princes of the empire. Uh, and they will have to make sure to pay attention to the uh, imperial authority track, trying to keep as high imperial authority as they can in order to gain the additional bonuses that come from it. Uh, you will be focused on their first missions mostly in Hungary, Bohemia and Venetia or the Balkans. So those will be your first points of action uh, on top of diplomatically influencing your electors to ensure that you will be winning the upcoming elections. Uh, the first event from Austria uh, will be directed actually at one of these first objectives, which is Hungary, with uh, option to either gain additional influence in Hungary, which could help you uh, leading to a more diplomatic approach and uh, perhaps a subjugation and annexation of Hungary, or gaining a claim on them to just try to attack them and, and conquer them right away. It's quite important also to mention that the first event for Austria comes without any ruler. So perhaps if we were using your ruler as a as a military leader for the time being, uh, because you will you will be a few rounds away from from getting uh, another featured ruler. So you may not want to to get your ruler killed. Uh, for a bit later down the road. Uh, with Austria, we have uh, quite an important event also at the beginning of H2 called the Shadow Kingdom that will bring Lombardy and Central Italy to leave the Holy Roman Empire. But option A will give you the option also to gain uh, vassal tokens all uh, in all the provinces of Milan. So trying to keep Milan independent, uh, whether it is by just kicking out any possible invaders or just keeping them as an ally will be quite important and, and it will give you quite a big reward. Uh, the second realm that we're going to be looking at is Castile. With Castile your initial missions uh, will focus on exploring the distant continents and finishing the Reconquista. Those are the most easy ones. Uh, so if you would like for example to, to go down the path of exploration you can either go right away to try to, to grab quest for the new world, perhaps with a revolutionary ideas, uh, trying to search for it on the action uh, deck on the setup. Or you can also wait for the second uh, event of Castile in H1, which is Christopher Columbus, which will give you a cheap way to get quest for the new world. But I guess that will depend on, on what your opponents also do. If they go really early to grab quest for the new world, it can be a bit 
too hard for you to just wait until Christopher Columbus. Uh, and then if you are not exploring, most likely you will then focus on La Reconquista by taking out Granada, with whom you already have a claim at the beginning of the game. The other mission path uh, deals with Aragon and getting them vassalized and, and later annexed. Uh, for this is really important your first event on H1, the Iberian Wedding, which will grant you an alliance, will grant you a marriage and will give you plenty of influence in Aragon. This is a really important event for Castile because it also comes attached with a really powerful monarch. So you should be on the look for the first two rounds to try to grab this event to ensure that you manage to get uh, the Iberian Wedding for option A. And it's also really important that uh, later missions will also request from you that you are uh, owning all of the provinces of Aragon, but also uh, the missions that have to do with Italy will be much easier if you manage to, to do this. So uh, quite important to, to have a look at that event and to try to ensure that you get that monarch and that the, your opponents don't take also option B. Uh, with Castile, in, in going forward, it's quite important to note that you have some really great starting rulers at the beginning of, of the ages 1 and the beginning of age 2, but later down the road your rulers are quite bad, the events attached to them are really harsh, so you should really capitalize on, on that early game in order to not suffer later down the road. Uh, the next one we're going to be having a look at is England. Uh, England has uh, a bit rough beginning, uh, mostly because of how powerful France is at the beginning of the game and the fact that they have those claims on both Brittany and Normandy and also in Aquitaine. Uh, and that most likely that will bring a conflict upon you, uh, that you will be uh, having to, to fight with friends. That's the most likely outcome. Uh, the war with friends is not always predefined, so it's not like you will be most likely losing it or, or that you should give up on, on mainland or anything like this. It really comes down to the uh, events that are drawn on that first uh, on that first round. So if, for example, if France is really aggressive and it's declaring war and has plenty of units and their armies that are coming towards you, uh, look for events such as the plague, for example, that you can use it to kill uh, part of the of the French army, and then you would be having a upper, an upper hand of, on them. Uh, also, if you think that you are not able to fight the French directly, uh, another good alternative is to then focus on trying to at least conquer Scotland. And, and if they are an active ally, that should be quite an easy thing to do, actually. Uh, on top of that, on the first uh, half of H1, you should be aware that there is your own event, the War of the Roses, which will be adding some rebels in Northumbria and, and putting some of your towns there in unrest. So keep that into account when, when having that fight with France, if that happens, uh, because it can be a bit more difficult and more challenging. And if you overcommit on the, on the war against France and it goes down badly, uh, if you also have the War of the Roses happening at the same time, it can be quite catastrophic. Uh, the other alternative, if, if France doesn't go to war right away, uh, there is the, the, the French event that it's called the, the war, uh, the end of the Hundred Years' War, which can also give you some, some space, let's say, by giving them main. If you are not at war, you can give them main and, and get a truce with them, which can give you some room, some time to actually uh, try to then uh, fight France in the future. Most of your initial missions have to do with militarizing yourself, so either recruiting additional units to gain some claims in Ireland and Scotland, or uh, recruiting some uh, ships in order to get some admiral or some advisor for free. And those later evolve into you going to the colonies and, and, and getting some holds over there. Uh, the most important thing I would say for events wise for England comes in H2 where you have your first event of H2 uh, the, the Church of England where you can become Protestant and it gains you a lot of ducats according to uh, twice your base tag so it's quite an important one to go for uh, it normally gives you quite a boost uh, early in the in the second age that will bring you a lot of, of income and, and 
at that point you you can use the fact that you are an island to to actually dominate the seas and and the, the distant continents and, and become strong through that so your your good rulers start to come then you have later on uh, also the virgin queen that gives you a, a really good ruler so with england you have a bit rougher start but later on you can really become a strong realm uh, then moving to france so france as we said starts at odds with england with a really strong military uh, position uh, right at the beginning of the game uh, using those claims to either declare what england or at, at, at britain if you wish uh, and then the other missions have to do as well with uh, trying to subjugate uh, Provence, which starts as your ally, or try to conquer Bourgogne, that that would bring you at conflict with Burgundy. For that one, you can either wait for uh, later down in the first stage, where the Burgundian inheritance takes place, where spending three military power grants you uh, both French Comte, Bourgogne, but also Artois and Picardy. So you should try to leave those three man power because it doesn't matter who takes the event, you will always have the chance to, to spend that and gain those provinces. Uh, and then for uh, things that happen a bit later as well, we have uh, the, uh, the claim on the throne of Naples, which is your second half of uh, First Age event, which gives you a claim in Naples, but also an alliance with either Milan or Venice. So you can use that as well to try to uh, threaten Austria with uh, some attack. Uh, just like we were talking about uh, with Austria, uh, pay attention to the fact that later Austria could vassalize Milan so if you take them as an ally with this event perhaps you should try to look at vassalizing them before uh, shadow, uh, the Shadow Kingdom comes up uh, and then you can also try to go another route instead of focusing so much in, in Europe you could go also to the distant continents uh, to, to try to get there also some of your holdings you have some missions that have to do with Canada and the North uh, America and also some with uh, Africa itself. Uh, just make sure that you are not too late to the party. Uh, in some games England and, and Castile get a really upper lead on, on the distant continents and then it's a bit hard for you to come into that since both of them will have uh, strong navies and, and can be a bit harsh uh, when fighting with you. The next one we're going to be checking is Muscovy. Uh, so you are in a corner of the map, which is quite beneficial for, for defense and the fact that you don't have so many uh, players around you right from the beginning. Uh, your provinces are, your realm is quite small compared with other major, but you have some vassals. Pro the biggest problem that you have is that your trade is not that great, uh, because both trade nodes that are surrounding you, Novgorod and Kazan, their uh, most common provinces are others than the ones that you have. So for instance, for Kazan, of course, it would be Kazan province. For Novgorod, it's Novgorod province. So taking those out, it's a really good starting move, no matter if it is Kazan or Novgorod. Uh, some of your early missions will also be targeting those. Uh, note that with Kazan, you have uh, the realm of Kazan has their capital in Kazan, but they also have one province in the distant continents with defense with twice the units. So if you attack Kazan, there will be five uh, NPR units defending at full strength uh, without the possibility of retreat if you fight them in their capital so pay attention with that uh, also none of your H1 events have any negative effects upon you so you can either leave those events or, or you, you can be safe that if any opponent decides to take your events for whatever reason uh, they will not be hurting you they will be just giving you one or another uh, good effect so perhaps one of the things that you can do in order to annex the different small vassals that you start with, like Pskov, Yaroslav, and, and so on, uh, is that uh, some of the provinces here in central, in, sorry, Moscow and Ryazan start with a marriage with you. Uh, so you can try to go for a dispute succession to try to take them out so that you can leave the subjugation cards for your vassals and, and, and gain them over. Because some of your early missions will be about uh, gaining the, the ownership of all of the small realms and vassals around you. Uh, also remember that for exploring in the distant continents, uh, because you are doing it through land, you do not need the quest for the new world, uh, because those are adjacent already to your towns. So you can try to get those uh, going on as soon as, as you want. 
and then later down your missions will take you at conflict against Lithuania and against the Golden Horde and uh, here in the Baltic so at the beginning it's a bit on your own but uh, sooner or later you will have to come into conflict with your enemies quite important with Lithuania because if, if you let them be most likely Poland will grab them away and it will lead to a really uh, nice looking PvP war if you ask me but it will be nonetheless a hard one uh, then we have the Ottomans which has a bit of a rough start in the beginning of the game due to the fact that they have multiple areas that have a religion different than their state one so here all of these Wallachia, Macedonia and Greece are orthodox and then you have Rome which is a diverse faith but Trebizond is orthodox meaning you cannot also convert it uh, so you really need to have a good start in order to sort out these issues and that goes uh, by defeating the Byzantine Empire in round one uh, your missions at the beginning will have you attack the, the Byzantine Empire and recruit some units so that's the, the path that I normally go down uh, you can recruit units in both areas uh, to ensure that only two Byzantine units appear in both Greece and Macedonia and then basically siege down the two areas on their own uh, one of your starting missions uh, the one that is about recruiting units will give you the possibility to getting tertius really cheap and I recommend you to wait until the income and upkeep phase once you get your new monarch power to actually complete that uh, mission getting the reward then uh, because you really need that uh, military power in order to ensure that you win this war against the Byzantine Empire uh, you have Two of the most lucrative trade nodes in the main map the black sea and alexandria so trade wise you you are gonna be getting a lot of money from things like spices or silk uh, silk a bit more if you span east uh, and most of your missions will be militaristic having you expand uh, up the balkans and east uh, up to middle east and, and iraq and so on uh, so most of your game will be about combat and fight but also there are a couple of events one of them and the second half of h1 that has to do with the fate of crimea allowing you the option to uh, turn them into your vassals uh, you will have to keep some monarch power for to do that and the other one comes in the second half of uh, in the first half sorry of h2 that is uh, barbarossa the corsair that will give you basal tokens in either algiers or tunisia so keep an eye for for those of those two uh, in h2 you will also have really powerful uh, rulers so also quite interesting to to, to grab those uh, and then similar to austria your first event of h1 doesn't have a ruler in it so perhaps try to avoid putting your ruler as a as a leader unless strictly necessary so that you then don't end up having to look for a replacement or, or ending in a interregnum then we have poland uh, poland is also a bit small realm compared to other majors but you start with a few vassals around you your biggest issue at the beginning of the game is that you start in an interregnum meaning that you cannot enter into new marriages or that you cannot also uh, declare any wars right away and your first event will bring you a really good monarch and it will bring uh, lithuania as an ally it will give you a lot of influence with them and so on so it's quite important to try to ensure uh, that you grab that event is really similar to the situation with Castile because it will really bring you into a whole another level uh, then uh, the other problem that you have is that you have several areas that have also orthodox religion so you can either try to grab tolerance or you can try to just convert them uh, it's not possible with Moldavia because they are orthodox themselves but Lithuania is Catholic so they will be able to al help you uh, allowing you by uh, converting this this area so you can do that and, and it will sort out a bit your problem but taking tolerance is not a bad idea uh, then uh, your other initial missions will have you attack the Teutonic Order and you can try to do that sooner or later uh, if you want you can do it militarily sooner in order to get access to a bit better trade nodes uh, Lubeck and Baltic Sea since Krakow and, and Kiev but primarily Kiev is quite poor or you can wait a bit more uh, for your second event of H1 
which will uh, give you some vassal in Danzig and, and give you some claim and declare war all in one go in that event uh, to the Teutonic Order. Later, uh, also, we have the Polish Golden Age, which uh, gives you an option to get some marriages with Hungary and Bohemia and, and turn one of them into a disputed succession to allow you for an easy claim to attack those two. Then we move north and here we have two realms, but they use the same set of missions being Denmark and Sweden. Uh, with Denmark, you start with enough influence to right away uh, use a subjugate card on, on Norway, turning them into your vassal, which is one of your first missions. Uh, so you can go ahead and, and try to do that. Uh, you also start with a vassal here down uh, in Holstein, uh, which uh, the first event uh, of, of Denmark, the death of Adolf V, uh, will allow you to take the whole duchy of, of Holstein for yourself, uh, removing the area of Jutland from the HRE, so quite a powerful tool against Austria. Uh, but option B will only give you Schleswig and will actually release Holstein. Uh, most of your missions will have you first consolidating with uh, the Scandinavian region, but also uh, will have to do with Pomerania and the HRE. Keep in mind the fact that Austria will most likely be defending them, so try to build alliances and perhaps diplomatically subjugating them up until you are strong enough to actually face uh, the Emperor. Uh, and then, uh, similar to England, later on uh, the Second Age you get some event the Count's Feud that gives you the option to, to become Protestant uh, so and gives you plenty of, of resources, so keep an eye for that. There is a peculiar situation with Denmark that in the second half of H1, if you own all of the Swedish provinces, you have a chance to actually become Sweden, which basically treats your realm as the Swedish course from that moment on. Uh, and that's good because I'm going a bit already into Sweden, which is the next one. Most of the late game uh, rulers for Sweden on ages 2 and 3 are really powerful, their events are really good so if you want to swap to Sweden that's the, the, the terminology that we use for that is that it's really great because it will give you quite powerful rulers while Denmark later on has still some nice events but their rulers are fairly weak uh, with Sweden, if you play as them from the beginning they start with some, speci some special Regency Council which doesn't allow them to actually enter in marriages or declare war, similar to an interregnum, but also doesn't allow them to change the ruler. So they are locked in it. Uh, your events in H1 will allow you to actually get an, uh, a normal ruler, but will bring you into conflict with Denmark. Uh, so normally Sweden is played when Denmark is not a, a player, meaning that you should be able to perhaps hold your ground and in that, uh, against Denmark because they are quite powerful and, and maybe you would be able to take on Lund and Gotland uh, getting into Denmark proper can be a bit hard because of how uh, many ships they will be spawning from their ports uh, once you get out of the Regency Council and you manage to stay out of it because both events will have the same effect so if someone takes the second event of uh, H1 they could put you back into the Regency Council. But once you get out of there, you should be able to then expand, perhaps take over Norway or, or cross the Balkan, uh, the Baltic Sea, sorry, to, to try to grab some of the provinces on the other side. Uh, then in the Second Age, uh, the first event, Church and State Reforms, will also give you the, the option to become Protestant. Once again, just like Denmark and England, getting plenty of bonuses from that. So it's quite an interesting event to, to, to look at. The next realm that we have is Portugal, uh, which uh, is the, f the only realm that starts with a distant claim right from the get-go, allowing you to generate uh, some colonists and to actually colonize. Uh, the, the claim goes in Gold Coast, which is a, a province with, with gold, so it's quite interesting, and will allow you to then make some uh, claims on the adjacent provinces and perhaps take over that particular trade situation and remember you don't need quest for the new world to to keep exploring the the provinces that are facing the same sea zone or or uh, fabricating claims on the distant provinces adjacent by land uh, you are a bit sandwiched against castile so in those scenarios that you are 
playing with Castile also as a player, you should be aware of any military conflict with them. Perhaps diplomacy should be your, your approach there. You start with your alliance with England, uh, no matter if it's, uh, if it's a, a realm or a player, if it would be a non-player realm, perhaps with adjacency uh, to Castile, you would be able to call them to arms and gain some additional units. If it's a player, perhaps you can uh, bargain with them to come to your aid if Castile comes to, to attack you. Uh, your second event of H1, Casa de India, similar to, to how Castile has it, uh, also allows you to grab Quest for the New World quite cheap. So you can wait until that point if you want and meanwhile try to get uh, get the, the north of, of uh, Africa and try to explore this coast around, around the southeastern Atlantic. Uh, to get then the quest for the new world later on or depending on your opponents perhaps you would want to to do that earlier uh, Portugal is the first of the featured but not major powers meaning that they have to uh, make their own mission deck they have four missions of their own and then they have to use another eight from the common deck or, or six if playing in the basic scenarios of scenario booklet one and you should mostly focus those on expanding overseas and perhaps dealing with the North African realms and, and turning them Catholic, basically. Uh, the next one, it would be the Netherlands, which has uh, an option to either start as Holland, uh, to start as Flanders or to start as uh, Brabant. Flanders is the hardest one since you are not part of the HRE, meaning that any fights within the HRE would call the, the Emperor. Uh, and Holland is the strongest one because they have the best uh, trading provinces plus they have double ports while Brabant only has one. It's uh, one of the smallest player realms that also starts in a similar situation like Sweden with a uh, Regency Council preventing you again from declaring war, entering marriages or changing your ruler. Uh, so at the beginning, and unless, unlike with Sweden, where they can remove it within H1, uh, you actually have to wait all the way till H2 in order to remove it by event. So uh, first H will be mostly developing your realm, perhaps researching quest for the new world to go to the new continents, and and diplomatically annexing your your neighbors. It's important to note that on H2. Uh, the second half of, of H2, you have Act of, Abju Act of Abjuration, which gives you provinces in all of the Dutch core provinces that are those with this Dutch flag. So you can try to wait perhaps till that moment to get those and, and just focus on the other small provinces uh, that are adjacent to you. Uh, so that, that would be a, a nice option. And then uh, similar to Sweden, England and Denmark, you also have an event that will give you plenty of uh, resources and turn you protestant, uh, which uh, you should be looking at in the first half of the second age. The other option, just like uh, other realms, is to try to get the Burgundian inheritance as well, which will give you the, the Burgundian provinces here in Flanders, plus their, until that point, vassals, uh, to get them already as uh, towns. So that, those are the two ways that you can do that. Waiting until the act of, act of abjuration or taking them right away in the Burgundian inheritance. Similar to Portugal, you have four native missions which you combine with the uh, generic deck. And those focus mostly on uh, getting the entirety of the Netherlands and Dutch provinces and then uh, dealing with the uh, distant continents and the Protestant uh, faith. Uh, so your your deck should look at complementing that as well. Uh, the next one is the Papal Realms, which starts uh, quite small. You only have four tax base, including the one in Avignon. Uh, you are in control of the Curia from the beginning, since you have the Roma Cardinal spot, which is the first one always. But because of that, you also cannot have any more Cardinals. So ex excommunicating realms that they are threatening to take over the Papal Curia using the Cardinals Death Event icon. Those two tools will be quite beneficial to, to take out those realms. Uh, the fact that most of Italy is protected by the Emperor will make it a bit difficult for you to expand there, but perhaps use diplomatic expansion and wait for the uh, Shadow Kingdom if Austria is in play for those areas to disappear. 
uh, trying to look uh, for the Neapolitan succession event so that Naples breaks away from Aragon is another way because then you could take over Naples itself. Uh, so Papal States is a bit rough at the beginning, a bit complicated situation because other realms will be much bigger than you. Uh, but still there are ways around it to try to expand and try to grow. Uh, your mission deck, similar to the other non-feature realms, has uh, four native missions and then the rest are generic missions that are focused on, I, I would say, focus on, on conquering neighboring areas, perhaps again going to North Africa, uh, and then the end goal for you should be uh, the mission about unifying Italy, which you should be able to do uh, after a few ages. Next we have Brandenburg, Prussia, that again starts uh, also quite small, uh, but you are in a really strong position to take over your neighbors and, and start growing. So your main issue is that you start just with two manpower. So you will have to rely most likely on, on allies or mercenaries in order to, to have enough units for um, declaring war and fighting wars. Perhaps allying Bohemia or Saxony that they can give you plenty of units would be a, a good uh, thing to, to start the game while focusing on diplomatically annexing uh, one province miners, uh, trying to get access to the Lubeck or the English Channel trade notes can be a good idea, so perhaps uh, taking over Lubeck or Hamburg could be a, a nice way of starting. Later in the first age you have the fate of Newmark and the succession of uh, Stettin, uh, so those are your, f your first and your second events for, for H1 which allow you to develop provinces, allow you to get claims in Pomerania and declare war on, on Pomerania, which is the realm here on the right. So those are the things that perhaps you would be looking at doing. Uh, and in H2, you have a similar event to other Protestant realms called uh, the Secularization of Prussia, which allows you also to become Protestant and gives you a lot of uh, resources as well. Uh, and then later down the road, you also have some events that are quite powerful with, with really good uh, rulers in them. Uh, so focus mostly your mission then in, in military, conquering the lands around you uh, and basically trying to form Germany as your final mission. Uh, then we move into Venice. Venice starts with a really strong uh, trade position, meaning that you have provinces in, in all across the Adriatic and here in the Aegean Sea, allowing you quickly to, to trade in Alexandria, in the Black Sea and in the Adriatic Sea. Uh, the problem from that is that you are quite spread thin, uh, so it's a bit hard for you to defend, for example, your uh, provinces in the Aegean Archipelago if you come into conflict against I don't know, the Ottomans or, or against the Mamluks. So you have to rely on a really strong navy in order to do that. And then back at home, the Emperor can declare war at you since you have Brescia, which is unlawf un unlawful territory, uh, since you are not a member of the HRE. Uh, so you have to be aware with that. Uh, most of your missions should focus on, on trying to get uh, the trade done, uh, completing missions related to I don't know, taking over the Balkans perhaps. You can try to take Dalmatia, Croatia, Bosnia and Serbia and Albania. Uh, and also, just like the Papal States, if you manage to get to secure the secure the Neapolitan succession, to have them split from Aragon, perhaps that's also a really nice target to, to get. Uh, with Venice, another thing to note is that most of the events have not that great effects, uh, sometimes actually quite harmful, plus they may come with, the, with um, a bit poor rulers, and most of the time they come with an ill health uh, token on them, meaning that they will die at the first mortality symbol. So you will need to pay attention to that, keep in hand some rulers that you can replace them with uh, to not end up in an interregnum. Uh, the last of the featured realms would be Mamluks, which actually is strong, uh, they have a strong position right from the beginning. They, they, they feel a bit like a major power, just that they don't have the full deck of missions. Uh, the main thing is that your events are rather bad for you and they come with quite horrible rulers so that's the drawback to your strong position meaning that in most times uh, you will not want to take your events because they are bad 
but if you don't take them, you will get something even worse because both options feature a bad thing for you, but one of them is even worse than them. But if you take the event to try to take the least bad one, you will be st stuck with a really bad ruler again. So that that's the main problem. However, you start again with a really strong position with trade possibilities in Alexandria, the Black Sea, Aleppo and the Adriatic Sea. But also the fact that you have a province in Upper Egypt means that you start already with the possibility of getting ships in the Indian Ocean and, and you are the only player that can do that and you should be able to get a lot of wealth also from this trade node plus if you wish you can do also research the quest for the new world and actually try to get to the East Indies as the first player and, and you would be insanely wealthy uh, from that back in the main map uh, you will most likely get at odds with the Ottoman Empire so try to get as many of the small NPRs as you can before they do uh, they will be busy at the beginning with the Byzantine Empire so perhaps trying to take over Karaman or Kurdistan before they do it would be really important and also perhaps getting the alliance with Karakulu would be really nice uh, your missions are focused around explore, expanding into the Arabian Peninsula, uh, expanding into the um, Arabic world and it would be quite important that you then combine your deck accordingly so if you want to go for a quest for the new world route take events that will complete from uh, take missions sorry to complete for having uh, distant provinces but also try to get some that will be about I know, marriages and alliances because perhaps you will go down that route here in Karakoyunlu or with Tunisia and your end goal would be to reinstate the caliphate that is your big final mission then there are two more realms that they are just featured in scenarios but still perhaps we can include them here those being the Byzantine Empire and Ulm over there in Bavaria uh, with the Byzantine Empire they have a really hard and challenging scenario similar to how the video game looks like uh, most of the time you will have to be restarting your scenario because the Ottomans will just crash you um, for this scenario where you are playing against Venice bot and Ottoman bot uh, your best bet is to try to gain alliances with other big realms around so Austria for example or perhaps Poland while trying to make that Venice and Ottomans start fighting each other. Uh, there are events in both of those realms that will have them start at war. So try to keep an eye for those, perhaps take them so that they are basically busy with each other so that they don't notice you. And then uh, you also should be looking at the rise of the Purple Phoenix event, which is the, the your event for the second half of H1, will, which will be giving you uh, to annex allies or vassals allies only those that have one tax province so perhaps allying things like I know, Albania or uh, Ragusa here uh, would be really important to then gain them or Rhodes or Cyprus uh, would be really important to then get them annexed with that uh, event and then with the vassals there is no limit to the one tax so any vassal can be uh, good for that uh, your missions uh, your mission A1A A, is quite hard, the one of recovering core territories, because basically you have to take over the Ottoman Empire. Uh, but 1B, that is monopolized trade, should be possible to be done, just invest in a few light ships. And then you could follow that up with the uh, Conquer the Balkans mission and going up the, the Balkans. Uh, so yeah. Um, that, that would be all for them. Then the final one, it's Ulm. Ulm, it's uh, just a one tax province, so you start really weak, but you have really strong abilities in this scenario that you're playing with Ulm, uh, the glory for Ulm scenario, which allows you to subjugate even larger realms than you. So you could, for example, try to target Bohemia or try to target, I don't know, Venetia or, or Milan uh, with an alliance or, or Burgundy even, and, and try to use the subjugate card to just subjugate them right away and that will make you grow really really fast uh, remember to grab because at the beginning of the scenario you are allowed to once you've drawn your cards uh, draw uh, the spy network and the subjugate card so remember to do that and use that to actually grow quite fast uh, Austria bot and, and France bot are quite likely to basically 
kill you right away if they attack you so try to avoid them uh, perhaps going north is a, is a good option first of all and then pay attention to the uh, Burgundian inheritance to try to get a really big amount of land uh, when that happens so keep a marriage perhaps with Burgundy so that you are able to then uh, grab them uh, in that event uh, depending on France perhaps you will be able to to take everything or at least use the, the Flanders and Wallonian Netherlands uh, provinces uh, and then all of your events are really amazing they are really great they are really powerful so uh, if you can take it because it will be putting you in the lead uh, so that brings it up for the 17 realms that are featured in the game uh, I didn't go for for other because it doesn't make much sense uh, maybe hopefully we'll get additional ones at some point in, in time I, I really wish that's the case uh, and once again this is just uh, a brief overview it doesn't go into details and all of these strategies really depend on, on the game itself from game to game things can go different depending on what your opponents do which milestones come up which events come up so it's just meant to give you a brief overview of what your realm can do but you have to really adapt to the to the situation uh, that you are actually living so once again uh, thanks for watching hope you liked the video and i will see you in the next one take care